This video is by Straight Goods News. SG News. Sounds like a good idea. We've had expert evidence uh, from Dr. Rosenblum of the United States, for example, an expert who negotiated these very agreements, who said, you know, they don't really work because you never know what to ask for, and the country you're asking may have a secrecy regime, so they're not going to tell you, or they don't know. So we're looking for much more, much more routinized exchange of information, so we can get to the real bottom of just how serious the problem it is. Like there's 80 billion dollars in one year that went to two tax havens from Canadians, Barbados and Cayman Islands alone. This 80 tax havens. The enormity of this problem is absolutely staggering. Baby steps just don't cut it. And cutting the, the very agency to go after this is outrageous. I noticed in your recommendations you had talked about having, having Canadian companies have to disclose the taxes that they pay in other jurisdictions. What would that do? And, uh, and, and is that not done now already? No, it's not done now. Every subsidiary, we're saying, of a multinational company ought to disclose exactly where it's paid taxes and how much. So we can get a handle on the, the, on the problem. That country-by-country country reporting is one of the central recommendations that the NDP Minority Report has made. Other countries do it, we think it's time for Canada to. And just to be clear, so what exactly do you think that that will tell the CRA if they have access to information? Information is power. People like yourself will bring to the public's attention that Starbucks, for example, paid no taxes or very little taxes on its corporate earnings in the UK, and so voluntarily it was guilted into doing the right thing. We want Canadian companies, to the extent that they're doing things improperly and avoiding the at least spirit of the Canadian tax law, to do the very same sorts of things. These kind of abuses are just not cutting it with Canadians. People are outraged, especially yesterday we all filed our taxes, right? And now we look at our neighbours and corporate neighbours who aren't paying their fair share. At the same time the government talks like it's doing something, yet look at the proof is in the pudding. They're cutting the CRA, 3,000 people over three years, $250 million, and we're supposed to think they're taking this seriously? We have a trillion dollar problem globally. Trillions of dollars, according to the experts. Tax Justice Network, Canadians for Fair Taxation, experts who testified before our committee. And I just think it's time that we sort of step back and say, we as Canadians are going to start showing leadership. That's not what's going on at the global level and domestically. Their response, cutting the CRA, is simply deplorable. Uh, in terms of the IRS, there's a over question. The IRS uh, has got a court order in the United States to go after the CIBC subsidiary uh, in the Caribbean to uh, go after some of its American clients. What do you think of that move? And is that the kind of thing that Canada should be doing? Is going to the courts to say, give us your the John Doe application, if you will, to say, yeah. open, up your, open up your records? I'm not going to speak about a particular case, but yes, there are, are major banks have subsidiaries and tax havens. That's well known and acknowledged before the committee. I think it's really important that we look at the banks for, to show some leadership here. I think it's important that Canadians understand that there is a lot of our bank subsidiaries and people who, Canadians who store billions of dollars offshore. There's some questions get asked and a more aggressive stance on compliance take place. So yes, the kind of action taken by the IRS vis-a-vis -vis the uh, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, that may be appropriate that Canadians actually take action. Why don't we enforce our laws? Why do we talk tough and then simply do nothing? That is what's disturbing Canadians and certainly disturbing us on the committee. Was there anything positive in the, in the committee? Yes, there certainly was. Yeah, the, I think the report is a very good analysis of the state of the problem. I think it fairly describes the testimony we've heard from people on you know both sides of the debate. Are tax information exchange agreements useful, yes or no? I think it's a fairly good and robust account of the, of the problem. And yes, there's a few of the recommendations that, that are uh, that, that are in the general report that you know talks about continuing doing this and studying that and so forth. So you get the tenor of my remarks. I think people are looking for action. The report main main recommendations aren't about action; they're about studies and this and that. I don't think it goes nearly far enough for Canadians. Mr. McCallum came out here and said, and I don't know if you had seen the report or the recommendation, but that there basically wasn't going to be a mechanism where we would have to account for all the money and to actually have that dollar figure that the NDP and a lot of other Yes, exactly. Is, is that in this? It is not in here. The question's excellent. We've our first recommendation, I believe, on the list is let's get our hands around the tax gap. Like, how big is the problem? The United States studies it, France studies it, the UK studies it, Australia studies it. Canada says, well, we don't think it's worth studying. My mother used to say, if you can't measure something, you can't manage something. And it seems to me that's what they need to do. Why don't we at least? I think if Canadians and the government realized the enormity of the problem, 
maybe they take it more seriously. So studying the tax gap, tax gap is exactly the kind of thing that should be done. It's the first step. So have you done all this for nothing? I mean, if we don't even know how big the problem is. Well, they're going to study it, they're going to think about it, and they're going to cut the staff of the CRA. And I think Canadians are going to look to their left and see that taxpayer, is she paying her share? Look to their right and see that taxpayer. Well, they're not paying theirs either. And at some point, what can happen is we can lose our whole self-assessment system. Remember, it's, all, it's a trust system, our Canadian tax system. We expect our neighbours and our corporate neighbours to be doing the right thing and paying their fair share. Well, you know what? If they're not, maybe some people will say, I'm not going to bother. That could undermine our entire tax regime. That's how serious this problem is. So you had a dissenting report. What, what, what are the highlights of your dissenting report? Highlights is that we study transfer pricing. That's the way in which corporations decide inside their various subsidiaries, corporation to corporation, where they should put their profits to pay the least tax. We think that, does, that, that demands a very serious study so we can get serious and collect more taxes that are left offshore. Maybe we should study automatic tax information exchange agreements. I talked about that. And generally speaking, let's restore the CRA to its former glory. We got people who know what they're doing. Let's get the people hired so they can get this. And call it, if you will, an investment in the future. In 2005, the government spent $30 million. And guess how much money they collected? $2.5 billion by going after tax havens and getting serious. Let's call it an investment. Let's not talk about how, we could, how great we are because we've cut and slashed and burned an agency that could be getting money for Canadians so you and I don't have to pay as much. That's what this is about. It's fairness, it's equity, and it seems to me it's also about dollars and cents. If there's billions that aren't being paid, maybe that means you and I won't have to pay as much.